Are you ready? Welcome to the Text Titans YouTube series. It's yours truly, Sly Gittins. My co-host Gabe had to be called away. The show must continue. And this podcast, we got someone so special, someone that helped me in my career that I thought you would definitely benefit from getting just a little bit of her knowledge. Um, I got Cheryl Thompson here, technical consultant at Ingram Micro, and she's going to go over her, her career and how the flow is going to go today. I'm going to ask a series of questions, but then Cheryl also gets the chance to at, put me on the hot seat, right? So this is going to be even cooler, all right? And then also, we got an insider tech tips section. So if you are planning not to watch it to the end, I seriously tell you to wait because the jewels that we want to be giving to you, you're going to have some good information. So let's get off and get started for the first question. So Cheryl, how did you get into your career? Well, I loved math in, in school, and that was like my favorite subject. So I was trying to decide, did I want to do accounting or do I want to do computer science? And then when I looked up the numbers as far as the salaries were concerned, computer science looked so much better. So while I was in high school, I took a basic programming class. And one of the speakers, we had a guest speaker to come into our classroom, and he posed a question, and that question stuck with me all these years. What if you took all the computers in the world and you plug them into one plug, one electrical outlet, and then you unplug that plug, what do you think would happen? So to me, I thought, okay, this is a career that I can stay in longevity wise, and it's a relevant career for right now. So that's what made me go into computer science. All right, cool. So what, is the, what are the most significant technologies that you've seen in your career? The most significant technology is the internet. And when I say the internet, it's the proliferation of information, but in real time. Right now, there's so much big data that's out there that it takes us, it's a lot of information and you can get to that information fairly quickly. Uh, I can remember when I first started within uh, IBM working for them, we had days where we travel, we call them travel days. <laughs> And you know, you had your time to do your travel, get to a point A from point A to point B, but I took some time off to spend with my children. And then when I came back into the workforce, everything was going like light speed. It was no longer, you didn't have a travel day, you made your calls in the airport, you got on your, your WebExes in the airport, uh, you took calls in the airport while you're traveling. That was due to the proliferation of information in real time. It was happening. Everything was happening in real time. So the biggest uh, change I saw in technology, of course, is the internet and how quickly information is passed from one person to another. All right, sweet. That's a great answer. So let's go to the next one. What's your top technical skill and soft skill? And... What skill does someone right now getting into the IT field? What skill do you need, they need to develop now that's going to help them throughout their career? So my top technical skill, I started with IBM. I interned with them. Um, I'm a product of uh, affirmative action. I went to Gramlin State University to get my computer science degree, and I minored in mathematics. And IBM came to us to find, came to Gramlin State University to find students that could go on to be uh, become IBMers. But when I got on board with IBM, I did an internship with them for two semesters. And after I graduated from college, they hired me on. But when they hired me on, they hired me on in this field called AIX. And AIX is uh, their version of Unix. AT&T developed Unix, and then IBM came out with their own version called AIX. And AIX was ran on what they call the RT, and then they moved it to the R6000. And now we know it as the PowerBox. And for many of you out there, you know this power box as the technology which Watson runs on top of. And everybody knows Watson and artificial intelligence, but this box was um, used, is used now to run Watson on top of it. But when I went to IBM, I learned uh, AIX. One thing they had us to do uh, was to train people to learn the actual product down to the kernel level. So there was about 20 people worldwide, excuse the, the noise in the background, 
there was about 20 people worldwide that IBM sent to train on this particular product worldwide. I was one of those 20 people. They sent 10 from the EMEA countries and 10 from the US to go to California, Wilshire, California, and learn this product, which was AIX down to the kernel level. I was one of those 20 people that learned it down to the kernel level. So my top skills are, my sandbox is really the firmware and up. I love the OS and I love the application. So I like um, Unix, Linux, C, C++, that type of coding it, and, and shell scripting is what my uh, favorite skill is. type of soft skills help you be where you are now and like how does it help you as a technology consultant if that makes sense soft skills are so important one of the soft skills that i, I have is communication and, and most importantly re relating with other people uh you can be the smartest person you can be the wisest person you can be the most intelligent person in the room but if you cannot relate to your team members it does you no good um one thing that uh, i was taught is that People do not care what you know until they know that you care. When you begin to listen to your customers, understand what their needs are before you start spouting these litany of products that you have, um, then you'll be better off because they really want to know that you care about their business and care about their pain points before you start going into your full-blown presentation of what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. So the number one thing that uh, I would say soft skill wise for me is being able to relate to others, okay. all different type of people, different cultures, different backgrounds, being able to relate to others. Sweet. All right. That's great. Uh, I, I'm going to get one more question in there. What about how was your transition from, it seemed like in the beginning of your career, it was more post-sales, hands-on, technical, into a pre-sales role. Um, can you talk about the transition there and you know what skills you had to learn and develop on the path to that? Sure. Um, in my post-sale career at IBM, I was responsible for basically services um, and anything that happened to the power box from an AIX perspective on up, uh, we can get calls into the support center. I was online doing those calls, but then when I went into the field for IBM, I was then able to handle crit sits, what they call critical situations in the field. And in doing that, you had to be able to be composed because they're calling you after they've gone through level one, level two, level three support. And these are IBM's top enterprise clients all over the country. They'll call you. You get a call on a Tuesday. You're on a flight on a Wednesday. And you're showing up in that data center. And you, have, you are the last line of defense to fix that problem. Okay. Of course, it wasn't just me. I was working with a whole team of IBMers that I can call at a drop of a dime developers to help me get through resolving that situation for the client. But mm -hmm. you have to have your composure because your client is already in a frustrated knot because they're trying to get their system back up and running. And then you had to make sure you pulled in the right person. It wasn't just about you. It was about you finding the right technical person to be able to help you solve that problem. So that was a different level of stress. When I moved to the channel, that's when I began to do pre-sales uh, technical support. And with pre-sales technical support, you are you have to understand not just your product, but you have to hold understand the holistic a view of the data center and all the products that connect with your product. So understanding it from a solution perspective, mm -hmm. not as, as in on the post side of it, you understand that needle in a haystack because mm -hmm. you're trying to solve a specific problem to your specific uh, product that you support. But on the flip side, pre-sales, you have to understand the full gamut of products and understand how your product fit into your client's full solution. That was great. See, that was one of our insider tech tips. See, that's why I was telling you to stay on, but it's about to get even better with Cheryl because, you know, time and time again, we do these interviews, you watch them, and it's always the interviewee that's on the hot seat. But we want to flip that around. We want to give Cheryl a chance to send to t ask me a few questions. And the cool thing about this, I wasn't able to see it to right now. So I'm about to be on the hot seat. You're about to see me start sweating. I'm hopefully <laughs> it won't happen. So Cheryl, what questions you got for myself? All right, Sly, here you go. What made you start Tech Titan? 
Oh, no, that's, that's easy, you know. The reason why I started this is because I kept getting questions. How do I get started in IT? You know, how do I learn? What, you know, what technical skills do I need? What soft skills do I need? How do I get access to different types of people that I can't reach? And I thought I could create this platform um, to, you know, to connect people, right? So the great example of this, my co-host Gabe found me through my YouTube channel, right? And then we collaborated and I'm like, hey, I'm doing this Tech Titans thing. It'd be cool if you from the electrical engineering and me from the business and pre-sales and the marketing side collaborate and bring this here. And then also what would be even better, what if we could bring people like yourself who has that experience, right? Who can teach the other generation coming up. And I think as we progress through our careers, it's our obligation to help the people uh, that's coming up and also people making that transition, right? So people who like, who just listen, like I started off as an English major, switched to marketing and then did IT and I'm here in cybersecurity. You got Gabe who was electrical engineering. You said you like math. So that's a characteristic. So someone can say, I didn't know that, right? If we can just do that to one person, if one person says, no, they found some value to this, they was able to make a decision faster, that's great, man. I want to talk to people in high school. If I would have known this in high school, I'd have been even more laser focused when I went to college. Because once I got in those IT classes, I already knew it was for me. I was already sold. I married my first, my first love right there, right? It was IT. And I've been doing it, but I couldn't put two and two together. So I'm hoping this platform uh, will be that for other people, that beacon, that connection, that point to show them that, you know, if they into it, don't be afraid embrace the IT if you're willing to learn that you know this would be for you so that was a great question what other ones you got for me awesome I love that answer here is you're paying it forward that's awesome here's your next question what challenges do you see in IT today oh the big well that's that's a loaded question right so it just depends what area of IT that you're in right so from my perspective being in all I mean I'm coming from the pre-sale side and now in like the product marketing side, the biggest thing for me is cross team collaboration. Mm. Each team speaks different languages. We got yeah. different jargons. We got different terminology. We got different types of people that we hire and marketing. You got a little bit more interpersonal skills, right? And then you still got analytical skills, but it might be a different subset. But when I'm working with say engineers, our engineering team who codes, they speak a different language. I need to understand the SDLC cycle. Uh, I need to understand Agile, waterfall, these things I need to be aware of and how do they work, how their personalities are different than me, right? Um, I got to work with my finance team, there's the budget work, I work with my sales team, there's a different set of teams. So being able to interact with different types of people, understanding is an area where I feel like a lot of um, something they don't really show you in school, right? That's something that you might work with someone in your team, but um, be comfortable at working with different types of department. Learn just a little bit. I don't need you to be the expert, but be able to have empathy with that person. So when you when they're working on a code that took them maybe four months to execute, and now they bring it to me in marketing, and I don't do a good job at conveying that message, they have the right to be upset because they put a lot of time into that. But I understand that, right? And how you know or how do I work with my product management team, right, to make sure that we're working in lockstep and conveying that message. But if you're on the post-sales engine side of it, the same thing happens, right? You still got to work with your sales team, your sales engineers, then it gets to you. You know, that cycle has to be smooth for the customer. And just really remember you customer facing, um, you know, the customer comes first, understanding their problems and really listening. But if you're not customer facing, what is your product meant to do? What's the business benefit? A lot of people I'm running into they're making these products, but they don't understand what problem are they solving, which affects marketing. Because if you don't know the problem we solve, how can I market it to the appropriate people? How can they digest it? If they don't find it um, expiring, um, it doesn't help them. So um, just communication skills, integrating and working with cross-team interaction is some areas that I'm finding that a lot of people struggle in. And it's an ongoing challenge that we're going to have right, as you progress through your career. Um, and especially when you get into those strategic roles, you're going to have to do an even better job of doing that. Um, so that's the area where I think that people will need to focus on. Awesome. All right. Any other questions? Is that it? 
That's all the questions. I just had one other comment. Um, yeah. As I move forward next in my career, mm -hmm. I'm looking at artificial intelligence okay. and data scientists and Python programming. Okay. So those are some of the things that's uh, for the next generation. Mm -hmm. Cybersecurity is definitely one of the top, but also data scientists. They are looking for people that are able to communicate and build these models out for these computers yeah. in order to have an effective um, AI solution. All right, perfect. You heard that. You didn't hear it from me. You heard it out from Cheryl. So make sure you take a look at those data set of scientist classes. I'm going to give you some tips. LinkedIn learning, you can learn some on there. Um, Coursera.org, you can take free classes. I do it all the time. Um, I found that the reason why I wish I had an engineering background, right? I realized when I started taking some of those artificial intelligence classes, my math start, stopped at calculus too. <laughs> they want three, they want some other stuff that I've never seen before. So I had to go take a few other classes. But again, I got to do it for free online and improve my skills, right? So as you go through your career, don't be afraid to add on new skills to it. I'm constantly learning, right? So thanks again. Um, I just got off the hot seat. I'm not sweating anymore. You see, I was smooth <laughs> and calm under pressure. I hope you enjoyed this. Cheryl, thank you so much for your time. How can uh, my audience get in contact with you? What's the best way if they want to talk to you? What do you recommend them to do? Uh, they can reach out to me on Facebook. It's Cheryl Thompson uh, via Facebook. Or then uh, email me at Cheryl.L.Thompson at att.net. All right. And also, I put a link to our LinkedIn profile on the bottom. Contacts, please don't spam her. So I'm just going to focus on the Facebook and also the LinkedIn, the email. You can figure that out after, guys. <laughs> I hope you found this important. Let me know in the comments below um, what you want to see next. And again, thank you, Sarah, for your time. And um, I, know I appreciate every second that you gave us today. Thank you. And tell Gabe I said hello and have a safe travels back. <laughs> Gabe, you, see, you heard that. Have safe travels back. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to stay notified.